Setting up your full-length size and die can be very simple, and yet there are several ways of doing it. In my opinion, controlling how far you're setting back the shoulder of the case is very important, but it may not be to you. Today, I'll show you how I do it, but as always, if you're happy with your own process, by all means, stick to it. Now, first off, some sizing dies are going to come with directions and some don't. Most sizing dies that do come with directions sound something like this. Place your press ram in its uppermost position, the handle all the way down. Screw down the sizing die into the press until it touches the top of the shell holder. And then to ensure all the play is removed, add another eighth to one quarter turn. One full rotation of your die should move your die down somewhere around 72 thousandths. That eighth to a quarter of a turn is somewhere around nine to 18 thousandths. Quite a significant distance when we're talking about sizing brass. In most cases, this will size it so your brass will fit. I'm not sure it's the best for accuracy or case life, but it may work. Others set their dies so it will fit in these case gauges. Again, if you're just trying to know if it will chamber, these will work just fine, I guess. Personally, I think it's still sacrificing case life and accuracy if you're setting up your die to fit your brass in a case gauge. The method I suggest you use is going to involve calipers and headspace gauges. If you want to do something, you want to be able to repeat it and you want to be able to measure it, or at least compare it. These headspace gauges are essentially comparator bodies. You can get a budget version of the headspace gauge from Hornady, or if you're looking for a slightly better tool, Short Action Customs makes a fine headspace gauge. If you want to set up your die for the best case life and accuracy, the first thing we're going to need is fired brass from the chamber that we're loading for. The second most important thing is that the brass has been decapped meaning the primer needs to be removed from the case. All the brass measurements we're going to talk about today are on decapped brass, because if we left the primers in, they can skew our readings. The way I set up my die, some would call bump sizing. However, this is a full length size. It's sizing all the sides of the case, including the shoulder. The general rule, if you want to call it that, is you want to bump the shoulder back at least two thousandths for a bolt action. We'll discuss this two thousandths number a little more in just a second. Now, there's a fun trick we can take our calipers, we can zero our tool on a fired piece of brass, set our die for contact, size our piece of brass and see that we're very close, two and a half thousandths. If we weren't close or we'd size too much, if we want, we could take a measurement with the back side of our calipers on our die, determine what that is and adjust the measurement from the bottom of our lock ring to the base of our die with our caliper until it read what we, the adjustment we wanted. Now that method works just fine if you have something like a coax, but if you have something where you have to remove the entire die or unscrew the entire die every single time, it may be easier just to adjust it in place. One thing that I'll always recommend is adding a witness mark to your die. It doesn't always have to be exactly where you're going to leave it, but it's going to give you an idea of how much you adjust it. I made a line on my lock ring as well as the die. I knew depending on what my measurement came out, how I would adjust it and roughly how much it moves. Again, a simple witness mark goes a long way. There are fancier die lock rings out there, something like this one from Forrester, who has markings on it to help you make that adjustment a little bit easier. Every mark on here is roughly a thousandth of an inch. One thing I will recommend is if you're going to be walking in your die and you're going to be using the same piece of brass, if you're using a die like an RCBS or Forrester, it's not too difficult to remove that expander ball so you're not overworking the neck on the piece of brass you're using to get your setup correct. If you're using your expander ball, after you've got your setting for your headspace, you can return it in place, use a different piece of brass, and ensure your setting is correct. You may find that a piece of brass you haven't sized yet responds differently to your die than one you've sized several times. Keep in mind when you're setting this up, you should have your brass prepped the way you intend to do it when you size all of your brass. Something like annealing or not annealing is going to change your die setting. So what about this 2000th bump number, shoulder setback, or whatever you want to call it? It's generally the number that I'm shooting for when I reload, at least for bolt actions. It's going to let your action cycle smoothly, but your brass shouldn't be too sloppy inside the chamber. For something like a semi-auto, you might want to make that number three thousandths because you may be prioritizing function over accuracy. If we're being honest though, I'm not sure one thousandths is going to make a huge difference. This is the choice that the reloader has to make, not some guy with a YouTube channel. When talking about this 2000s bump, one thing that's popped up recently is how do I know my cases are fully expanded to my chamber? Like anything else when it comes to reloading, measure it. On this channel, I always prefer to let the data do the talking as much as possible, and there's often more than one way to solve an issue. One of the examples we're going to talk about today is in 6.5 Creedmoor, and I happen to have a headspace gauge that's going to help us identify how much our brass is expanded. We're going to put back in our 6.5 Creedmoor insert. If I was using the horny tool, I'd be using the D400. Again, this is with a comparator body, and so I'm going to 
look at the measurement I get from my headspace gauge and my comparator. Hopefully you guys can see that. The measurement I'm getting is 14465. This again is a comparator. It's not actually measuring the headspace, but that's all we need to do. Since that was the headspace gauge it was used to index our barrel, we know that since that goes in our chamber, that our brass has to be a minimum of that length, 14465. Now for today's test, I start off with 20 pieces of brand new Hornady brass. The headspace measurement on our new brass was anywhere from 1.444 to 1.465 inches. So we have two cases at each charge weight, going from 38.8 grains of H4350 to 41.5 grains of H4350, behind 142 grain Sierra Match King. I'm going to put up one of the strings velocity and pressures that we took along with this, just to give you an idea of what the cases were exposed to. I don't think that most people would be loading to that low of a case pressure, but we can see that the total variance on our entire lot went from 1446 all the way to 1447. Measurements very close to our headspace gauge. So since our max charge had that 1447, should we just subtract two thousandths from that 1447 measurement, go for 1445 and be done? Probably not a horrible idea, but what if our brass hasn't fully expanded? Well, let's take a look. When we talk about full length sizing, remember when we're sizing all sides of the case, what's actually happening is the case is going to get longer. And if you're not bumping the shoulder when you first set up your sizing die, your headspace measurement will actually grow before it shrinks. We can use this to our advantage to find out the answer to this question. Now in this case, I pulled out my short action customs die because I can actually gut it and since the bushing in this die sizes both the shoulder and the neck, and I can not lose my setting and just size the outside dimension of the case. Sizing only the body of the case got this to 14485, so the headspace measurement is larger than when it started. Now we can use this case and cycle it through our action, and see if it cycles smoothly or not. I removed the firing pin with the bolt and then reinserted the case and cycled the action. I could tell that there was extra friction with the case that had been sized on the body only. The other measurement that was interesting is that it actually lost a half a thousandth after it was cycled through the action. So what number are we to pick? 1447, 1448? Let's look at some brass that's been fired three times. Green are the full length options and the yellow are neck only options. Again, three firings. This is Lapo brass versus Hornady, but it's been fired through the same barrel, same chamber. In the end, I really don't think there's going to be a huge difference in these measurement values, but ideally you would always have the same brand of brass. We can clearly see that this Lapua brass, our initial when it was new, started off a headspace measure around 1444 or 14455, and all of it has grown to either 1447 through 1448. Our neck only options I think are very telling because those have had nothing move the shoulder and three firings with a pretty stout charge of H4350. Personally, I prefer not to have my bolt and chamber sizing my brass, but you do what you feel is right. I'm going to call the number for this chamber either 14475 or 14480 for the reference measurement. So where does that mean that I set up my die? My resizing goal is going to be 1.4455 inches. I can pretend that there's no variance in my sizing process, but frankly that would be a lie. But it is pretty much within a thousandth of an inch of total variance. So as long as my headspace measurement is 14460 or less, I'm relatively happy. Now my 6.5 Creedmoor is set up as a minimum headspace, so it's very hard for me to oversize with a standard die. But what about our 223 die? How bad can it be? It's a pretty much brand new Forester full length sizing die, set up for that magical, probably not even an eighth of a turn after contact with the shell holder. We've changed our headspace gauge for our 223 version, we're going to zero it on some fired brass, and size our case. Clean off our lube, and we can see we've moved the shoulder on the case back 10 thousands. If accuracy and case life are on your consideration, this is the wrong way to set up your die. Maybe that's just, just a Forester thing, right? Well, let's pick up our RCBS. Again, basically my brand new RCBS small base sizing die. Set up our sizing die so we just make contact. Give it that extra eighth of a turn. Might not even be that. It's certainly nowhere close to a quarter. Take our next. We're going to find another piece of fired 223 brass. It's basically identical to the last one, but so we zeroed it, lube our case, and size it. Clean off the wax, and there we've got eight and a half thousandths. I'm not sure of any application where we need to resize our brass eight and a half thousandths. If you're hoping for max accuracy in case life, this probably isn't the optimal way of setting up your die. It's overworking your cases. 
If you just measure the dimensions of your brass, what possible advantage is there of overworking your case this much? Sizing your cases correctly is just one part of the reloading process. Choosing the correct powder is also very important. Check out this video here to see how we evaluated 10 different powders in 223 Remington for velocity and pressure to pick the best one for our application. Until next time, stay safe in small groups.